Hi, I'm James Flanagan, and I'm the project manager, as well as a geotechnical and traffic engineer. Brianna Lestaglio, facility designer and construction. Hi, I'm Dwayne Bullerin, and I'm the water resources engineer. And together we are at LBF Consultants. For the CIVI 495 capstone project, we designed the Coronado Golf Course Recycled Water Treatment Plan. Here's a little background on our plan. San Diego does not have enough water in its own to satisfy the needs of its inhabitants. Because of this, between 85 and 90 percent of the water must be brought in from outside sources. This is very costly and potentially dangerous if a devastating disaster were to ever disrupt aqueducts. It is essential that communities all around San Diego come up with ways to maximize water use in order to make San Diego less dependent. Non-potable non water reuse re could be the answer to this dilemma. In fact, the solution is currently being used in at least four major city sites around the city alone. It makes sense for the city of Coronado to use this solution as well. They can do this by tapping into the existing sewer lines for wastewater to treat. This treated non-potable water will be used to water the greens of the Coronado Golf Course. In order to make this project a reality, research will be done in order to make sure that the best product is implemented for the best price. Different sites and techniques will be looked at and will be judged based on simply unnecessary criteria. Analysis of what is present will be taken into consideration and reflected in our project. Also, the surrounding community must appreciate the end result as well as the journey. Our project is located on Coronado Island, which by looking at this figure, we can see is just west of downtown San Diego. Also, by this map, you can see that the golf course is just west of the Coronado Bridge. Our project is located on Glorieta Boulevard. All right, so the first part of our project that we need to figure out is how we're going to bring all of the sewage over to our site location to treat the water treatment facility, which is located right here in Orange. The entire uh, city of Coronado Island has a very intricate uh, sewer system uh, made of both gravity-based uh, pipes as well as sewer uh, force mains. So uh, for the location that we chose to collect all of our sewage from is from um, PS8, which is Pump Station 8 on the city of Coronado. Um, it is located in Gloria Bay, and this pump station collects all of the sewage from the southern half of Coronado Island in uh, Silver Strand. So, with all the sewage that's collected here, we have to first see if um, that location generated enough sewage to work for our water treatment facility. So, uh, the way that we figured this out was we went to an online database which told us uh, the total population of uh, the southern half of Coronado Island which was about 4,100 residents. With that number, we were able to multiply that by the average generation of 80 gallons per day of sewage as uh, found in the city of San Diego sewer design manual. And that gave us a grand total of about 348,000 gallons generated per day just for that location. So with 348,000 gallons moving um, to the end point, which is PS4 on the northeast uh, corner of the island. That pump station then transfers all the sewage underneath uh, San Diego Bay over to the city of San Diego water treatment facility that is located in, um, in downtown. Um, so with that, they have to, uh, the city of Coronado has to pay the city of San Diego to take in their water and to treat it for them. So what we're hoping to do is we're going to redirect that sewer line at this uh, connection point, which is off of Pomona uh, Avenue. And we're gonna create a new pipe system going through uh, the residence uh, streets, and then it's gonna be going along this yellow line all the way to our water treatment facility. So we'll be installing about 2,600 uh, feet of new PVC pipe. Um, as you can see, there would have been multiple areas that we could have made as a connection point. The reason being why we chose here instead of maybe a closer location in this area is that uh, this pipe ends up running on a main street uh, which has a lot of vehicles running through it throughout the day. 
Uh, in comparison to over here, uh, closer to this side of the island where it's more residential area. So through our traffic report that James was able to do, we figured out, or we concluded, that it would be a better option to create a connection point going along this side of the island because uh, it'll be easier for construction purposes. Um, so, by bringing all the sewage over to the water treatment facility plant, we will be able to bring in 348,000 gallons of sewage. Uh, that water treatment uh, plant needs only 347,000 gallons to treat to be able to tr uh, create about 313,000 gallons of water for the Coronado Island to irrigate their greens. And that 313,000 is the 90% conversion or, uh, that water treatment facilities do. And to go into more detail about the water treatment facility, we will bring up Brianna. Our wastewater treatment begins with liquids and solid seed. That's pretty much a big rig that takes out the big particles and lets them be disposed of in a different way. And then we go into our grit and storage tank. This is to hold our wastewater during peak hours if it cannot go through the system yet. We figure during that process some natural sedimentation will occur. So we do have a sludge pump at the bottom. There is also an overflow on this tank. From there, we have two pumps that pump into two separate primary sedimentation tanks that are each 100,000 gallons. These systems have sludge pumps at the bottom. The system is designed so that all the heavy solids will naturally settle out due to gravity and everything light like oil and fats will be sitting on the top and skimmed off with fiberglass lights. From there, we get pumped into our aeration system. Our aeration system has a dissolved oxygen meter, which is attached to a variable frequency drive, which tells our system how much to aerate the water. From there, it goes into our secondary sedimentation tank. Again, this is, a, is another stage of sedimentation. It's a very large circular clarifier with one rake arm that goes around the top to skim off again all the lighter particles, the oils and the fats. And then there's a sludge pump at the bottom for anything heavy that might settle out, which at this stage we would not experience too many heavy particles as they would have already been settled in primary sedimentation. From this point, the water would be safe to use for irrigation. However, we've chosen to take it one step further and treat the water with ultraviolet lights. That goes into another tank, which is this. The water flows through and is instantly disinfected with UV lights. From there, it's pumped into our 500,000 gallon recycled water storage tank. This is where all of our clean water will be used to irrigate the golf course. This can be used on the irrigation, being pumped out by a booster pump and tying into the existing lines at the golf course. These irrigation lines will be replaced, we found in our research, so we did not feel at this time it was necessary to replace these lines. So our system ends with the booster pump pumping into the existing irrigation lines. I'm going to talk to you about the geotechnical design for a little bit. For our geotechnical report, we focused on two main things. The first was the cut and fill of the site, moving the soil, and the second was the foundation size is for all the different pumps, for all the different tanks. For our foundation sizes, we used Trizaghi's method in order to calculate a factor of safety for each of the tanks. In doing so, we figured out that none of the tanks actually needed a foundation because of how large they were, they were able to displace a lot of the load. Even though they didn't need a foundation, we still decided to put a three foot rat slab under each of the chains in order to give it a little extra cushion as well as uh, prevent water seepage into the groundwater. For our cut and fill, we used our top topographical data, which can be seen on this picture, and we were able to calculate volumes in order to see how much soil we needed to cut. So now that we know what we're building and have an idea of the project, we need to determine exactly the schedule of the project, the duration, and how much it's going to cost. So our project involves demolishing an existing maintenance plan. So we do have to be on site at starting 1-6-2014 to move on to the site. We will start by demolishing the existing building and then doing a grade of the site, followed by excavating the tanks, pouring the tanks. All of the tanks are going to be cast in place concrete, and we will need to install the pumps and do all the electrical. The total duration for the project is roughly eight months, and it is set to end on 8-15-2014. The 
cost of the project has been broken down, as you can see, into each of the stages of treatment. So you can see exactly how much each stage costs and where your money is going. Some assumptions were done for the labor costs on the project. It was assumed that 15 men would be working eight hour days for each of the tasks at each of the schedules. So that's how the labor costs were provided. We took a, that several labor values and took the average of them to get those rates. The final cost of $4.3 million includes all labor, electrical, and materials, as well as equipment. And again, it will be an eight month problem. In conclusion, LBF Consultants has decided that the Coronado Golf Course Recycled Water Treatment Plan for Irrigation Purposes is a sustainable project. It will allow us to solve the dual problem of sewage leaving Coronado Island as well as the transport of water to the island. It will overall save the golf course a lot of money and be, again, sustainable for years to come.